Hello again, I'm back and continuing my trend of unexpected episode topics by discussing Netflix's Wednesday, or more pointedly, what I feel to be the thematic and emotional core relationship that defines the show and its popularity. As always, thank you to my wonderful patrons making these episodes possible, links below. Now, a quick primer, Wednesday is part of the wider Adams Family Media Library which covers short comics, TV shows, movies and 3D films. The basic premise of the Adams Family was to be a parody of the archetypical All-American family. As a result, they are... They're creepy and they're kooky, mysterious and spooky, they're all together ooky, the Adams Family. With a love of the macabre, inverted greetings, and perhaps most fascinating of all, a genuinely loving and extremely supportive family. Yet, there's not enough time to unpack what that says about America in this episode. The premise of the show, it's Wednesday itself, has it that there is a wider supernatural community that the Adams are a part of. And that title character Wednesday will be attending Nevermore Academy, a boarding school for such children after she committed some minor crimes to avenge her brother against bullies. Only Wednesday gets to torture her brother. Her plans to escape the school are interrupted by a murder mystery that begins occupying her focus. That, however, is the main plot-based storyline. It is not, I feel, the emotional core of the show or the vehicle for Wednesday's character development. That is all centered on her roommate, the perky pastel werewolf by the name of Enid Sinclair, a blonde girl with a bright personality and extremely modern mentality and a sociable personality. Enid, however, lacks the ability to fully transform into a werewolf and as a result suffers from a lot of emotional abuse from her parents as well as the threat of werewolf conversion camp. Make as much or as little from that as you wish. As far as I am aware, she has no legacy in the wider franchise like Principal Weems, but she is something of a homage to the girls that Wednesday was often contrasted with across various films and movies. She is also, however, an inversion of that very character type, where in most Adams Family stories, such characters would usually be hostile to the Adams for not being finger quotes normal, or would be inspired by the Adams' unconscious rejection of social norms, Enid is very much comfortable with who she is and who Wednesday is. This creates something of an inversion of the usual dynamic as well. Normally the Adams, and often Wednesday, are the moral and emotional centre of the story. I would argue that in Wednesday, the moral centre is actually Enid, and her relationship with Wednesday serves as the primary source of Wednesday's development and emotional maturity. With that in mind, let's talk about Wednesday again. Now, based on my and other neurodivergent audience members' readings, the general framing in the show, and the actress's own commentary on how she tried to play Wednesday, I think it's fair to say she is meant to be read as neurodivergent. One of the first questions one must ask in this situation is, did they do a good job? And honestly, I think so. I think it is done well because there's usually a pretty clear dividing line between when Wednesday is being macabre, being neurodivergent, and when she's just choosing to be, well, a jerk. Because make no mistake, while there's definitely times people respond poorly to Wednesday for not behaving finger quotes normally, and otherwise lay heavy and unfair expectations on her, she has been giving you no signals, dude. There's also plenty of instances where Wednesday will be intentionally hostile or otherwise treat people very poorly. She even outlines it herself that she can and will be selfish and treat the people around her badly. One might think this shows emotional maturity, being aware of one's character flaws, but while self-awareness is a step on the road to maturity, it's far from the first or the last. This stands as pretty much peak immaturity, crossing one's arms, stamping one's feet and saying, Take it or leave. Yes, that was entirely necessary. And this attitude even extends to her own parents, which leaves one with the impression sending her to Nevermore is perhaps the first time they've ever really tried to moderate rather than indulge Wednesday. Other characters also try to get Wednesday to behave as they want, but all pretty consistently fail, as it's usually less about making her consider others' feelings, and more just a desire to make her fit into a mold. The exception to this is primarily Enid. 
Now, despite that, these two have their fair share of tension, most notably in the first meeting during episode one, where Wednesday is consistently rejecting Enid's efforts to be welcoming and imposing herself on Edith's comfort zones, though they do sort it out eventually. And also after Wednesday low-key coerces Enid into a very distressing situation near the end of the season. In the former case, this was mostly Wednesday taking her frustration out on Enid. In the latter, she was seemingly quite unaware of how or why she'd upset Enid, but she also lacked the emotional maturity to respond when Enid outlined why she was hurt or accept any responsibility for the damage done. We get a lot of back and forth with them throughout the show, but a consistent refrain is that Enid is the one with the genuine emotional maturity. She certainly gets something out of her relationship with Wednesday, namely a greater willingness to stand up for herself and be more conniving. But Wednesday is the one who gets a friend, who is actually entirely willing to accommodate her emotional needs and boundaries while also having the maturity to help her grow. Respecting Wednesday's boundaries, I think, is one of the key things I love about the relationship. Wednesday very clearly dislikes hugging and being touched in general, while Enid is obviously an extremely tactile and affectionate person. Despite this, Enid consistently refrains from pushing into Wednesday's space, be it with hugs or even in their room, willingly respecting the tape line Wednesday made to separate them even when angered. Instead, across the show, we see Wednesday be the one who closes the distance between them, while Enid remains open and welcoming, but not forceful. This is also seen with her accepting Wednesday's general personality, like inviting Wednesday to cheer in an event, but shifting it to a glare. This isn't her being snarky, it's a genuine effort to both encourage Wednesday out of her comfort zone and do something fun, while also doing so in a way that is distinctly Wednesday. By the same token, Enid is quite happy to outline when Wednesday is just being rude for the sake of it and will stand up for herself and push back. In essence, she's imposing the kind of boundaries Wednesday never dealt with before and that forced her to treat Enid with respect if she wanted to retain their relationship. And we actually see this having an effect, like Enid withholding help from Wednesday until she apologizes for mistreating Thing, or Wednesday moving her crime board out of the room because it causes Enid legitimate distress. I think Enid's emotional maturity is also very well shown in how she can make up for missteps. Because like Wednesday made a mistake in taking Enid to the manor investigation and handling as she did, so did Enid with Wednesday's birthday, i.e. she organized a surprise party for her and as someone with anxiety and major issues interacting with people, let alone crowds, yeah, I don't blame Wednesday for being upset. But unlike Wednesday, who responded to Enid being upset by refusing to take any responsibility for what she put Enid through, Enid actually owns up to it and takes responsibility for overstepping Wednesday's boundaries and not taking Wednesday's reaction personally. In essence, Enid offers acceptance of Wednesday's macabre personality as well as her boundaries and needs, where other characters struggle with her at the best of times. Enid encourages Wednesday to go outside her comfort zone but never imposes unfair expectations or demands on her, and she will tell Wednesday clearly when she's going overboard. And through her influence, Wednesday does show increasing maturity across the series, becoming less isolated and more considerate, all while never giving up what makes her Wednesday, without ever having to become normal to be accepted. So yeah, I can see why people like the show, and more why so many took to the romantic potential of it. Suffice to say, there's a reason that Wayne Claire keeps trending, and I just think that's really neat. Thanks for tuning in. And that's all. If you would like to support my work, please check out my Patreon linked below, or check out my coffee to commission 3D models. Thanks for stopping by.